Three months ago, I showed you five mechanical harvesters in Lake Kissimmee that had not moved since March. These boats belong to Texas Aquatics and are state-of-the-art harvesting machines. While these boats were sitting for seven months, the South Florida Water Management District and the FWC hired Weed Busters, which is another contractor, to remove hyacinths just a stone's throw away from these harvesters. As we fly in for a closer look, you can see large amounts of spattered ox stems that are slowly making their way up the table. Keep your eyes on the bottom of this table as it goes through more spattered ox plants. See the stems coming up the conveyor now? This is because weed buster harvesters do not have pushdown bars like Texas Aquatics have. So when they go through the spatter dock, they rip the stems from the roots, which kills the spatter dock. Weed buster harvesters were located on Lake Okeechobee at the time, so they had to truck these harvesters all the way from Okeechobee. It wouldn't surprise me if the Florida taxpayers had to pay weed busters to mobilize their equipment since that is standard practice with any heavy equipment. This area is about to go through now, he obviously went through before, because you can see all the broken spatter dock stems and this large clump of mud. This is a cluster of spatter dock that he'd ripped from the bottom, so the whole thing floated up, bringing the mud as well. As he struggles to load this mud, watch the area on the right side just before his paddles. It appears to me that he has a hydraulic fluid leak and it is getting sucked into his paddles. The body of these harvesters are very small and unstable, and we know in the past that they have actually flipped over because of too much weight. He seems to have trouble getting his conveyor to work, so he stops a couple times to check out this leak. So how do you hide a hydraulic fluid spill? You spin around and stir it up with your paddles. These harvesters are nearly 50 years old and are constantly breaking down, but the FWC gives weed busters most of the harvesting jobs in Florida. These are Texas aquatic harvesters at work. I showed them to you a year ago when they removed hyacinths on this very lake. Their harvesters are twice as long as weed busters and can hold four times more load because they have a rake that compresses the plants. This means that they only have to make one-fourth of trips back to shore to unload. Here is a look at their push-down bar in action. It is a smooth bar so the plants don't get hurt when they get pushed down. This bar works on all emergent plants like bulrush, Kissimmee grass, and spatter dock. Not only is Texas Aquatics four times more efficient, but they have a lot better for the environment. With all of these things said, the FWC pays both of these contractors the same hourly rate. Unbelievable. Two weeks later, Scott Wilson and I went out on the lake to look at the job. We couldn't believe it. There were acres and acres of floating mud islands everywhere that this company harvested. All of these islands were not here a month ago and were all a direct result of a harvesting job gone bad. When spatter dock roots die, they begin to rot and release methane gas. The roots swell up and float to the surface and bring all of the mud from the bottom. Terrestrial plant seeds blowing in the wind land on the mud and begin to grow. Before long, you have a floating island that can even support trees. These islands move around the lake and can clog draining structures like the one on the south side of Lake Kissimmee. So the FWC has to hire someone to get rid of these floating islands. There are two ways to remove them. Since FWC loves to spray chemicals, their favorite method is to spray them with herbicides, chop them up with a chopper boat, and flush them down the river so they end up in Lake Okeechobee. Or the right way is to hire someone with the right equipment to physically remove them from the water. The practice of chopping up tussocks and flushing them down the river has been going on for decades. Every acre of tussocks has 600 pounds of phosphorus that will end up in Lake Okeechobee. The FWC chose to do this harvesting right in the middle of summer when the water temperatures are at the highest. Everyone except for the FWC knows that spatter dock is already stressed at this time of year. 
the last thing that this plant needs is all of its stems ripped off. That is why you should never harvest or spray spatter dock in the summer. Weed busters were seen pushing this floating island towards the structure on the south side of Lake Kissimmee. Fortunately, it ran aground here so they weren't able to finish the island off. My guess is that they were going to spray it, chop it up, and flush it down the structure so it will end up in Lake Okeechobee. Texas Aquatics is the only contractor that has a big enough harvester to remove floating islands. Their 90-footer, the one that has been sitting here for nearly eight months, is located not far from this island. The FWC will eventually have to remove all of these new floating islands that the Weed Busters just created. They won't be smart enough to get them now while there is a harvester available just a few hundred yards away. Instead, they will wait until they get big and have trees growing on them. Then it'll cost 10 times more money to remove. Florida statute number 369.2, called the Florida Aquatic Weed Control Act, states that the commission shall to the greatest degree practically prevent injury to plant and animal life and property. It goes on and states that the commission shall also promote, develop, and support research activities directed towards more effective and efficient control of aquatic plants. However, the FWC has never done a study comparing Texas Aquatics state-of-the-art harvesters to any other company, even though it is mandated in their own law that they created. This is just another example of our government funneling our tax dollars to their buddies while legitimate contractors that can do the job greener and more efficient are left out in the dark. The same time the FWC was harvesting these hyacinths in the south part of Lake Kissimmee, they were spraying herbicides in the north part of the lake. So the next day, Scott went there to check out the damage. What he found made him sick. There were dozens of patches of dead spatter dock that had been sprayed. If you look close, the spatter dock was dead, but the hyacinth is still green. This is what we are seeing all over the state. The native plants are the most affected by the spraying and the invasive plants are much more resilient and they come back faster. So the spraying is actually wiping out all of the native plants. In just the last 10 years, nearly 70% of the aquatic vegetation in the Kissimmee chain of lakes have been wiped out, but they still continue to spray. This is a map of the northern part of Lake Kissimmee. In 2011, the native Kissimmee grass and spatter dock started at the river and followed the shoreline all the way around Strom Island until it got to Lemon Point. This area was 740 acres of vegetation that was once known as Grassy Island. The area here is called Philadelphia Point. It too was covered with native aquatic plants. This is the Kissimmee State Park and it also was covered with native grasses. The small island you see here is Rabbit Island. The Kissimmee grass and spatter dock stretched a mile south of this island. This last island is called Bird Island because it's where most of the snail kites used to nest. The birds chose this island because of all the vegetation was home to their only food, snails. Watch as I slide this bar up. You can watch all of this native vegetation disappear. What a shame. The FWC is no longer capable of managing our lakes. If we do not stop them now, they will destroy every lake in this state. Stay tuned for part two. We're going to show you who in the FWC and the South Florida Water Management District is behind this latest crime against nature.